Hi, I'm Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck, and I'm really excited about the topic of today's video. Now, what we're going to be doing is I'd like to start opening the conversation with you about what we're doing with our new Infinity 2024. This airbrush is going to be the masterpiece of everything that we've done so far. All of the investment that we've laid into the company over the last five or six years is all going to be manifested in this airbrush. And so whilst I'm not going to show you that airbrush in this video, sorry to disappoint you, what I am going to do is I'd like to talk to you about all the directions that we've gone in with our design decisions, with our development directions, just to get your opinions on what directions we've looked at. Because I think it's a really interesting conversation to start. We've still got a little bit of finalizing work to do, and I just really want to try to take the opportunity to interact with all of you to get your thoughts on the directions that we've taken. So without putting too much of a fine point on it, of course, we already know that many of you were critical of the very front of our trigger action on our airbrushes. And we know that you wanted a little bit more of a direct feel to that. And we've worked really hard on that. And I think it's fair to say that from the feedback that we've had from all of you and the results that you've all had in your painting with the Ultra and the new Evolution 2024, that we've addressed that issue of responsiveness at the front of the trigger pretty comprehensively. However, with the Infinity, we're trying to take it one step further. And this is what our thinking is on this. What we know is that as you go up higher and higher in your painting ability, you start to understand paint much better. And so the way that we kind of describe our uh, goals for the Ultra and the Evolution is with the Ultra, what we're trying to build is we're trying to build a relationship between you and the airbrush, your muscle memory of how to use a double action airbrush correctly and to not learn any bad mistakes. We've tried to engineer a lot of those responses into the airbrush. On the Evolution, what we've tried to do is we've really tried to focus on making your connection really complete with the trigger and the feel and the responsiveness of the trigger in terms of how it paints. And what we're trying to do with the Infinity is we're trying to go one step closer to the creative process and we're trying to almost sort of make the trigger and the airbrush disappear and try to give you a direct relationship with the paint. And what I mean by this is, is um, oftentimes as people get more and more proficient with the airbrush, they start to do things like they start to use paint a little bit more thick because they want to make one stroke and get full opacity. And if you make one stroke, you can always make a tighter detail than if you have to make that stroke twice in the same place. And so when people look for responsiveness on the trigger from that kind of an airbrush, they don't just want it with paint that's been thinned right down. So the challenge with the Infinity is, is can we give a higher level of detail than the Evolution, but with a thicker paint, but still with the immediacy of response at the very, very front of the trigger that we know you want with a thicker paint. So that's the challenge that we set ourselves with the 2024 Infinity, and the evidence so far seems to be that we're pretty much there with that. So I'd like to get your feedback on that idea that you get to paint with a thicker paint, but with a really immediate trigger response that you can lay a detail down in one shot. You don't need to come back to it. The idea is, is to try to give you that immediate trigger response that feels similar, whether you've got a paint that's been highly thinned or a paint that's fairly thick. We're trying to make that response feel quite similar at the front of the trigger. The other thing that we've tried to really expand on with the Infinity is we did substantially change the design of the trigger top on the Evolution and the, uh, and the Ultra. And we stuck with the sort of tried and tested Harder and Steenbeck base design in the sense that we have this round trigger top with these steps cut into the front of it. We just made it much bigger and we smoothed out all the curves so that people could get onto it from whatever angle they like to paint from um, and still have comfort. Because remember what the Evolution is designed to do is to say, okay, you've learned how to airbrush with the Ultra, you've got the basic muscle memory down, and now you want to paint, 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 paint. So it's designed to give you supreme comfort for longer painting sessions and more control as well. And so what we've tried to do is we try to really understand why it is that this bigger trigger is so much more comfortable for so many different types of hand postures. And we've tried to understand that properly 
and then bring that into a really radical new trigger top design on the Infinity that we think is the perfect sort of extension of that realization of a trigger design that accommodates all different user styles, but for each of them gives the same level of comfort, the same level of feedback, and of course, most importantly, the same level of supremely subtle control. And we think we've done something there. The question I've got for you on that is, in the experience that you have with all sorts of airbrushes out there, are there particular surface finishes or trigger shapes or trigger variations that you have found have given you more precise control or more precise feedback through the tip of your finger than others? And if you could share those with us in the comments, I'd be really grateful. And then of course, one of the things that I'm sure you've all noticed is we've been really pushing forward on trying to reduce how far away we are with our hand from the surface that we're painting. So for example, if I take this um, uh, current model of Infinity and I hold it exactly alongside the Evolution 2024, you can see it's substantially shorter on the Evolution 2024. Now we've gone even more radical than that with the, uh, with the Infinity. We've done it in such a way that it doesn't cramp your trigger finger at all. So we found a solution to opening that space up while still shortening the distance between your hand to what you're painting. And we think what that does is we feel that the most intuitive form of painting is probably with a brush or with a pencil. And what we can do with that is we tend to hold it quite close to the ferrule and we have control by being able to touch the surface and then manipulate the brush. And so we feel with the airbrush that the closer we can get to the surface with our trigger hand, the more precise our control. Also because you don't have a long lever off of where you hold it that any little movements can be amplified. And so we think that that very short front end is a bonus. So I'd like to get your feedback in the comments on whether or not you agree with that as being a good thing. And then of course we come to the, the head of the airbrush, which I've always believed that this is the, the absolute most difficult part of the airbrush to develop. And the reason why is because the, 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 the margins that make success or failure are so, so fine. You know, you're talking about thousandths of a millimeter that make tangible differences in feel for how the airbrush will paint. And the goal that we've set ourselves with the Infinity is a little bit different from the Evolution. So one of the goals was that we wanted the three airbrushes to have very different characters and very different uses. For example, if we look at the Evolution, I think everybody understands what the Ultra's for. It's there to give everybody the best possible start in their airbrushing. It's for occasional airbrushes to have an airbrush that helps support their lack of practice, lack of technique, so that when they pick it up, they can feel really confident to do you know, the more basic tasks with it and do them really, really well. The Evolution is there to be the airbrush that, it's almost like we think the Evo is the airbrush that we think everybody should probably have because it's so good at such a massive breadth of different things. And to fit into that category, it's got to be capable of detail, but it's also got to be able to be capable of opening up and giving us a really good wide, fast background spray. The compromise there, of course, for a pure detail brush is that the V of the spray that comes out the front wants to be that little bit faster expanding so that we've got some really strong coverage when we're a bit further away from what we're painting. Now with the Infinity, we've kind of abandoned any attempt to compromise that. And really what we want is we want a cone that's expanding slower. And the reason for that is this. When you're painting extreme detail, there's kind of two kinds of response that you want or two kinds of feel and result that you want. One is that you just want to be super, super close to do very small details that fit within a very small footprint of the artwork. There's no movement there. And then you have these other kinds of details where there's some movement in the stroke. So for example, when you're painting fur or when you're painting any kind of motion um, stroke that, that is imparting the, the, the feeling of motion to something. Being really, really close for this kind of stroke is not necessarily a positive because you don't get the opportunity to move with great fluidity when you're so close to the surface. So you want to be a little bit further away. But often when you're further away, as the spray cone is expanding, you're not getting the same detail. So what we've tried to do with the Infinity 
is to create a head where you can be some distance away from the page or from the canvas or whatever it is you're painting, but you still are getting this detail going down even when you're not right on top of it. And that gives you the room to move more fluidly and create lines and shapes and arcs with more fluidity, more organic, more natural. And we think that's a very, very important aspect to a high artist's airbrush or an airbrush for someone who's really trying to push the boundaries of what you can use the airbrush for. So we'd really like to get your feedback on that goal as well, just to understand if you feel like this is something that would provide value to you as a painter. Staying with the head for a moment longer, some of you might remember um, we innovated the first sketching cap concept on, on the airbrush um, a year or so ago um, with our Giraldes Infinity. We think this has been quite successful, mainly because it gives the ability to provide some protection to the needle whilst maintaining a really, really open front end. So we've actually decided to include one of the sketching caps with the Infinity as part of the standard setup. So we'd love to get your feedback on whether or not you guys value those sketching caps and that concept as well. One of the other things that I'd like to get your opinions on is those of you who have had Harder and Steenberg hairbrushes in the past and have now invested in either the Evolution 2024 or the Ultra 2024, I'd like to know if you find that they clean up quicker than your previous models. So one of the things that we've done without getting too much down into the weeds of how we did it is the internal finishes of the paint ways. We've done a lot of work to optimize the finish on those paint ways and then also where the shapes change that there's no um, sort of blind corners or returns where paint could get stuck and be difficult to clean out of. Everything inside there is very smooth, very flowing, very organically shaped. And so I'd really like to hear if you guys have a feeling that the new airbrushes are cleaning up quicker and easier than the old. Because on the Infinity 2024, we've gone a little step further with that concept to try to make it even faster uh, cleaning and clearing than, um, than even the other models as well. And again, this is really because we're aiming the Infinity at someone who wants to work in a way that's absolutely all about the creative stream. We're trying to make the relationship between you and what's appearing rather than you and the airbrush. And so we're trying to make the airbrush so competent and so seamless that it just feels like you've got a painting relationship with the work rather than just with the airbrush. I'd also appreciate if you gave us a bit of feedback on cup sizes. So Harder and Steenbeck has always done a two ml cup and a five ml cup. And then of course there's also been a micro cup, the very, very small cup that is just barely bigger than the stem that the two and the five ml cup screw into. So I'm interested to know what your opinions are as Infinity users as to which of the cup sizes you prefer um, and if you think that there's a cup size that you lack that maybe you think we should be introducing. So that would be great to get your feedback on that as well, please. Thank you. Now we come to the topic of weight. And so there's a number of ways that we've tried to take weight out of the Infinity. Um, I tend to feel, so with the work that we've done over the last two years, we've tried to understand um, what uh, really speaks to each stage of airbrushing because we've moved away from this idea that you know we build airbrushes for applications we don't think that's actually what happens so for example if you think about a guy who's painting you know artwork on a 1957 chevrolet what's he really doing he's painting small things on a big thing uh, then if you look at somebody who to take a super extreme example um, somebody who's painting artwork on a zippo lighter that is actually a thing What's that guy doing? He's painting small things on a small thing. Um, now, okay, there's a different degree of small, but it's still small. So we tend to think that the purpose of the airbrush, generally speaking, is to paint small things, whether you're painting small things on big things or little things. And so we think there's a lot more value in defining our models in the context of who the user is rather than what their application is. The applications have so much more in common than different stages of users. So for example, beginner, intermediate, high level painter. Um, I think they've got very different needs. So if, if we just, for example, look at the trigger, those of you who've got an ultra and an evolution will notice that we've rated the trigger spring on the ultra to be a little bit heavier. 
than that on the evolution. The reason behind that is what we found was with painters who are starting out, for them to gain control of the trigger, to have a little bit more back pressure on that was more information for them. It was gave them more information about how far they were pulling the trigger and how far back they didn't want to pull it so as not to pull it too far. It gave them enough feedback that they could find control of it before they've got muscle memory over the pure movement of the trigger. Going down onto the evolution, once you've got some painting experience, we found that people really liked a much lighter trigger spring because now they could be feeling their way through that, making decisions on the fly instinctively with where that trigger goes without having to work against that harder spring. The same thing goes for weight. So we made the ultra fairly heavy because what we know with beginners is beginners want to have feedback from the airbrush. They want to feel what's in their hand, where it's pointing, where the trigger is. They want to get that information loud and clear. And then the evolution, it's a little bit lighter. And what we know about the infinity is we believe that in order to try to give um, you, the artist, an absolutely direct relationship with the artwork that you're creating, as opposed to with the tool in your hand, we want to try to make the tool disappear as much as possible. And part of that is weight. And so we've taken a bit of weight out of the 2024 Infinity. It's a bit lighter than the previous one, but substantially lighter than the Ultra or the Evolution. So I'm interested in your feedback on that direction. We will offer options that you can kind of customize the weight of the airbrush somewhat. If you prefer a heavier feel, that will also be possible. But I'm interested in your general feedback on that as to whether as you've progressed up, you found that a lighter airbrush frees your relationship with the artwork more so than having something that feels a little bit weightier in your hands. So I'm really interested in your feedback on that topic as well. And the final thing, that I'm gonna briefly talk about because I can't say too much about this is we thought very, very carefully about the heads on these new airbrushes. And I can't say too much more about this because this really is the big secret, but we have done something which has been quite a journey, quite a journey in terms of the technical difficulty of doing it. But we've done something with these heads that I think is really gonna blow you away and I just can't wait until we come to the day that we release these things and show you what we've done with the heads on these airbrushes because I really do think it's gonna be quite a game changer. And what I'd love for you to do in the comments is tell us what you think that might be. Um, that would be super fun. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope I haven't been too much of a tease to talk to you about it like this, but I am really, really interested to get these final little bits of information from you guys before we make all of our final decisions about exactly what this airbrush is gonna look like when we launch it. It's not far away now. Thanks for your patience and waiting for this. And speaking from my standpoint, I've been so, so happy with the work that we've done on the Ultra and the Evolution, but the Infinity is the one that I really feel that I really feel like we've done something really special for you as the artists and I can't wait to get it into your hands. So stick with us, it's coming soon. Can't wait to share it with you. And in the meantime, thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts and expertise with us on the channel. And uh, we'll do our best to make sure that we don't disappoint.